Hey, this is Bill DeWeese from Palm Harbor, Florida, with a new little YouTube channel I'm calling Long Strange Journey. And uh, this video is a hitchhiker's guide to planning a fishing trip with your GPS navigation system. And what we're going to do here is the goal is to discuss uh, the import and export process uh, to build a plan and to load the plan and uh, kind of uh, how to go about doing that, to give a background of the process, and discuss how this can be helpful. Uh, one goal is to not discuss uh, in great detail the why. Uh, to discuss that would be sort of to muddle up this specific topic, and it's redundant to some already uh, excellent information. Uh, but I will start by taking you to that excellent information. Um, so I've been a part of the Salt Strong community uh, for quite some time. Um, I, I don't work for them. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, directly connected with them, uh, just a member of the community. Uh, they have been an excellent resource for jump-starting the process of um, being more successful as a fisherman for inshore and offshore species. It's ever-growing community in terms of size and ever-growing insider community uh, in terms of content. If you go to your favorite browser and you search for salt, strong, online maps, uh, which is what I have here, that's going to take you uh, to a number of topics. It's going to take you to the community page where you can get linked in uh, to find out more information about Salt Strong, about the insider fishing community, and, and, and what they're about, and uh, uh, the kind of quality information that they provide. This first video here, I would draw your attention to. Uh, it's about a 12-minute video. I'm not going to duplicate that. Um, it's an excellent resource as to how you want to use the publicly available mapping pro products Google being MapQuest, to find these quote-unquote feeding zones, or basically what I'm referring to as the fish magnets, right? So you've got a large, expansive region. Uh, the ocean is a giant desert with these little oasis of locations that have specific structure that are going to, or, and, and bait and current flows that are going to be attractive to fish. Uh, they go through all of that in detail. I'm not going to duplicate that. That's going to tell you why this is important. If you haven't seen that video, you should start by seeing that video or at least watch the video before you worry too much about what we're going to do uh, in terms of implementing this or into, into your uh, GPS um, navigation system. All right, so what I've got here is I'm going to work predominantly with Google Earth. I'll show you an example of how to take advantage of other mapping systems because they talk about the value of other mapping systems and getting each one of these is based upon a time, right? So I'm looking here at Dunedin, Florida, and this down at the bottom says that the imagery date is almost a year ago, right? So three, over a year ago, 3-15-2018. So it might have been an overcast day for a particular region. It might have been a glare on the water. It might have been a high tide versus a low tide. So they'll go through all that detail, but uh, we'll, we'll, we, we will, I'll, I'll bring something in from Bing to this so that we understand what we're going to do here. The value of Google Earth in this scenario is it is a great way to keep a journal and a great way to separate your information. Uh, so as you can see here, I've got places or plans that I've used um, you know, for all around the state of Florida. And what we got here, this is a very popular area. This is the Dunedin Causeway, um, and this is Caladese Island, and north of that is Honeymoon Island. You've got a lot of wonderful places here. You've got passes like Hurricane Pass. You've got New Pass up here by Three Rooker Bar. Uh, you've got a lot of backcountry. And um, I've tagged some places here so that we have a good set of data, but I'm also going to show you what we're doing here for this. Um, so as you would have known from the other video, uh, the information as to the why, uh, we're going to look before we fish and see what are the areas that are particularly interesting to us. So for example, what we can see here is the water is sweeping through here and it's creating all these little peel outs of um, sand uh, from the water flows, and we're looking for grass flats. We're looking for points like that. Uh, I like these sandy areas for flounder for sure. Uh, you see here we've got an oyster bar. So I've got some things mapped here. This area, this flat, is very shallow at low, low tide, right? So this is exposed grass, uh, good snook line up here along the edge, especially when it's flooded or flooding. 
uh, grass flats here, uh, a transition from one foot of water down to about six to ten feet of water. So it's very good uh, area for that transition is good for trout. Um, and I've got something like a deep hole knocker rig. Um, so again, I'm going to look at this one place here, uh, similar to what we see from the video. We've got an island, which you've got some structure just because you have an island. Uh, this is part of the spoil system where they dug the channel. You've got grass flats all around. Uh, we've got an oyster bar here. This is a uh, keen interest here. Uh, so bottom line, I've got a bunch of stuff marked here. I'm keeping it all in a folder, right? This is important, actually. So if I wanted to create something new, right, I can go to my places and I can uh, add a folder, right? So a folder is going to be, you know, long, strange journey. All right, so I've got a folder, right? So in that folder, I'm now, that's now part of what I've selected. So anything that I create will be part of that uh, folder. And this is very good for segregating this. It's actually very helpful. So I'm going to go up here and grab a push pin. And I'm going to say I want a new untitled place. Uh, you can uh, do anything you want with this. Uh, I'm going to move this title place to that oyster bar. And I'm going to do my code is RD for redfish. Oops, I'm going to get into the name. RD for redfish and then oyster. It kind of tells me how I want to fish it and what the thing is there. You can actually add information here. So uh, oyster head at south end of spoil um, looks like a good place for redfish. So um, the other thing I want to point out too is you'll notice here that there's this white line, right? So that's a route that I've created. So anywhere along in here, if you're going to come in here under power and you're going to looking at this the night the day before, and you might be riding this at night, low light conditions. You got a bit of a grass flat here. You can actually come up here and grab a route, okay? And so this is a path, right? So this is going to be, you know, I'll put this as a uh, route, uh, Sharer, R, R, E, R, Bayou, right? So I got a route that I've added uh, to Shara Bayou. I'm going to bring that up again through properties. I'm going to recall that. And so now I'm going to actually add my route that I'm going to do. I'm actually just, this is not necessarily guaranteed to be a safe route, but I'm certainly avoiding the known areas that are going to give me grief, right? So if I want to come over here and fish this, I've got a route now. Uh, that route is going to come in from the outer water, which I can get to fairly easily. You can see boats here. I'm right off of the main channel. But you can actually add a waypoint uh, for the head of that route. But I've got that route now. This is important. Uh, we're going to see this importance later. Uh, but like I can do a, um, I can do another pin drop, right? And so uh, one of my conventions that I use here is. I will call that entrance, entrance, uh, so that's the entrance to the Shara route, right? Okay, so, um, and you can go crazy with this, right? You can make this as elaborate as you want. Uh, with the newer Lawrence, I'm not limited by names, space. With the Garmin, I was very much limited by namespace, so I have a very elaborate coding system uh, that for redfish, nook, trout, various species, various tac techniques. Um, so that's kind of what we want to do here is we want to create a plan. So I showed how to create that very simple, basic computer stuff, right-click, add folder. So I put that under long, strange journey. But I'm going to take these things that I've added, and I'm going to move them under the Dunedin uh, um, Dunedin Caladesi folder, right? So I'm going to grab my Share Bayou route and drag that up, and I'm going to buy, take my entrance to Share route and drag that up into Dunedin. So now I've got all these features inside of Dunedin. Uh, you can just keep adding these. Here's your toolbar up here. 
um, and you can add all these any way you want. You know, now you've narrowed down the water to where you want to fish, and you've given yourself the information that you need. Now you want to know, how the heck do I get there, right? So I'm going to take this Dunedin folder, I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to do a Save Place As. Okay, and so I'm going to give it an area here, and I've got Dunedin Caladesi KMZ. So you'll see there's two types of files you could save it as, a KML or a KMZ. So KML is basically Google's implementation of a uh, waypoint and route and sort of navigation-specific XML. KMZ is simply a gzipped, compressed copy of KML. So we don't need KMZ for such a small thing. If you had all the reefs in the Gulf of Mexico and you had a very large KML, you probably want to save it as KMZ. You can save it as either one. I'm going to pick KML. I've already done this once as a walkthrough. So I've got a Dunedin Caladesi KML. I'm going to save that, and yes, I'm going to overwrite it. Uh, all we've done here is done all of our work in D Google Maps. The only point I'd like to make while I'm here is, um, as you'll notice when you go through the video from SaltStrong, uh, they talk about Bing Maps. Um, and uh, Bing Maps, um, like MapQuest and others, provide just a second set of data. There's some cool features in Bing Maps uh, that they talk about uh, that I'm not going to re 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 uh, replicate. Uh, but uh, once we get to Dunedin and we get over here to the... Um, Go from road to aerial, right? So that's going to put us in a sort of a Google Earth view. But what you can do is while you're looking at these alternate sources, as was called out um, in the SaltStrong data, uh, SaltStrong information, like I can pick another location here that I find interesting like this one. I can right-click on that, and I can say copy, okay? But back over in Google Earth, also just come up here to the bar and put that in and that'll create that waypoint. There it is now, but it, all we've done is, you can see it's a much better image here. Uh, as is often pointed out, there's, there's different views at different times with low tide, high tide, clarity, blah, blah, blah. Right, so now I can right click on that, select properties, it's got the Latin lawn, and I can just go up here and say, uh, nice, you know, whatever, you can put redfish, you know, a grass flat. And we do a right-click Dunning Causeway. We do a Save As. And we overwrite KML uh, with KML. So now we've got that updated. I'm going to bring up another tool here. And this is what we're going to use. Uh, there may be other ways to do this. Uh, this is the way I prefer. GPS, GPS Visualizer. Dot com. GPS Visualizer dot com. All one word. Right, so we're going to go to GPS Visualizer. This is a whole collection of tools and other things, but we're going to go to Convert a File. Convert a File, we're going to say, um, uh, we want GPX. GPX is a sort of a universal, uh, a much more universal than KML uh, in terms of what your uh, Lorant system or your Garmin system will take. We've come here, we're going to, we've selected our GPS, we're going to do a Choose Files, we're going to pick our Dunedin Caladesi, uh, this happens to be where it is, but you would navigate to where you put that KML that you took from Google Earth, and you're going to take your uh, Dunedin Caladesi KML file and bring it in. You could add multiple files. Uh, you can put in individual discrete locations. You can do all kinds of stuff, but really, we're just going to convert from KML to GPX. So select GPX as your output, hit the Convert button. Uh, that's going to do the conversion, and it's going to give you this uh, it looks like somebody dropped a, uh, a book on the keyboard, but basically it's a date-coded timestamp and GPX file now. So we're going to do a file, save the link as, and we're in that uh, same directory. So we're going to call it um, Dunedin Caladesi GPX. All right, so we're kind of done. That's it. You can do a lot with GPS Visualize. It's a really cool site for working with GPS data. And this is what we want. Uh, what I do with this at this point is I take both of these, and I'm going to email it to myself, right? Email is going to act like a little cloud for me. Uh, these are very, very, very small files. And the video will pick up as we are working with the files. But these files are now going to go into your GPS via the mechanism in which they load them.